towards the end of the primary series in Ashtanga Yoga, we meet this new and kind of tricky movement. It's a dynamic backwards roll that serves as the exit from supine positions, those where you'll be lying on your back. Chakrasana, whose name refers to the movement of a wheel, is a vinyasa that should be approached with some caution if you're not entirely comfortable with the finishing sequence of shoulder stand and those similar asanas. So much so that my teacher Sharachi will actually tend to announce in the lead classes when he's on tour that if you can't do Chakrasana, then just leave it out. Sit up and jump back like normal. With that being said, it does do an amazing job of maintaining the rhythm and flow of the sequence and it serves to stabilize the spine by deeply engaging the core and releasing the lower back. So the first thing that's important to realize is that Chakrasana is actually two movements. First, to take the legs overhead to a Halasana type position with the hands down and the toes tucked underneath. Technically not a counter vinyasa, so it's fine if your feet never touch the ground. Then to push all the way through and roll over to Chaturanga Dandasana. So starting out in the back with the legs completely straight, initiate on inhale by taking the legs back. Engage the lower abdominals and let your back round as you take the legs overhead. Now, if you have trouble with this part of the movement, then just press your elbows down to support when you take the legs overhead. Place the hands down with the fingers turned out, elbows drawing in, and once the feet reach the floor, you should have the hips more or less right above the shoulders and the hands pressing down solidly to support that structure from below. Now begin the second part of the movement with a change of direction. The feet no longer looking to find the floor, but rather they reach back towards the back wall. Keep the feet together, legs engaged, and press firmly into both hands, exhaling into a strong Chaturanga Dandasana position behind the mat. So that change of direction from your Halasana type position is the crucial moment that needs to be timed correctly. Even pressure down into the floor with both hands and active reaching for the back wall through the legs needs to happen simultaneously for you to go smoothly all the way over. And any misdirection or mistiming of those forces will make this feel a lot heavier, maybe even so much so that you won't make it over at all. So have another look at the full movement. Now one of the common mistakes is planting the feet too strongly against the floor, which kind of puts the brakes on and prevents the rest of the movement from even happening. So if your feet are down, they'll have to be allowed to slide against the floor. Otherwise you could have them hover just above the floor and then plant them to land in Chaturanga. Both are fine as long as you're not going straight down into the floor or kicking up for the ceiling. And just really use that space behind you and be confident, make yourself big and realize that your destination is way back behind the mat. Now, if there's someone behind you um, quite close by, then of course you might need to just shuffle forward before you roll back. Um, or if you really have to, if you're really in a pinch for space and time, then just plant the feet, bend the knees and reach the tailbone back as a sort of modified version, but ultimately you'll want to practice your way towards landing in a solid chaturanga position to link up well with the rest of your sequence from there, and you'll want to do that on a consistent basis. All right, that's it for now. Please practice this mindfully, practice it consistently, subscribe for more videos, and if you like this video, please do me the honor of smashing the like button before you go. Much love, see you in the next one.